King Xi, the War Owl greets you and welcome to How to Play Counter-Strike Global Offensive. This time, it's part three of our three-part series on the economy game. I'm going to be talking about the mid-game. The mid-game is everything that happens after the early game. I just made up these terms on the spot, by the way. No reason to assume they are gospel. But the concept that I'm relaying in this tutorial are important. Now, after all the silly saving and light by weapon tree stuff is out of the way in part two of this tutorial, the game moves into a standard pattern that remains until the end of the half. The economy game at this point is a sort of tug of war, both teams vying for economic momentum and economic superiority. The main goal of this part of the game is to win rounds, get points, like every other part of this game. The best way to win rounds is to force your opponent to save, to make them so they can't buy what they want, giving you free points and advantages on rounds. Basically, it is at this point that you should keep an idea of where the opponent's economic state is and where your own is so that you know what to buy. Winning a round will give you between 3,250 and 3,500, and losing a round will only give you 1,400. So the best way to force your opponents into saving is to win a round. 1,400 is not enough to buy anything. So losing a round and losing all your players when your team money is low is a sure way to lose yet another point. Let's look at the price of a buy round for a player on each team. The Terrorist needs an AK-47 at 2,700, Nades at 1,000, and Armor and Helmet at 1,000. This is a grand total of 4,700, which is far above the reward for winning and even picking up a few frags. The Counter Terrorist needs an M4 at 2,900 or 3,100, Armor and a Helmet at 1,000, Nades at 1,000, and a Kit at 400. This is a grand total of 5,500, more expensive. So it looks like you can't even win over and over again and hope to be able to buy every round. Well, it's true, you can't. But when you win a round, a number of your teammates do not die and keep their weapons for the next round. So they get the money and they have their weapons, and those weapons are worth that money. So if a teammate wins over, or lives over and over again and is also getting frags, and another teammate keeps losing over, or keeps dying over and over again, they're not going to be able to buy for themselves. They'll be able to buy armor, and then their teammate can buy them a weapon. That's where buying your uh, teammate's weapons comes in. It's an important thing to do. It's all for your team. It's all about getting those points. Who cares what your kill-death ratio is? This is not Call of Duty. Now, this provides an interesting concept. If the team that loses a round is able to take down a number of other teams, uh, players, uh, other players on the other team with them, they can hurt the economy of the winning team. This is why you don't just see a winning team run out of money, unless they are completely rolling the enemy and not losing any players. Okay, so to recap on that point, even when losing, it's a good idea to take down as many other players as you can with you. This is why when a losing team is saving, meaning that they want to live for the rest of the round, even though that they're going to lose so that they get their weapons for the next round, they're going to set up and try to go for what we call exit frags. The concept of exit frags is this. Terrorists have planted the bomb. It is going to go off. They're in the sight. So they want to leave the bomb radius so they don't die. If they die, they lose their weapons. They don't lose money, but they lose their weapons. Um, living counter-terrorists don't want to go for it because they're going to die and they won't have money to buy the next round. So instead of running into the site and dying valiantly uh, when they can't win, instead they try to stay out of range and kill the terrorists as they try to leave the site as well as trying to survive. That's called exit fragging. And while it's important to keep track of the score of the game, the points that each team has, it's also very important to keep in mind the state of the game's economy. Every little thing that you do helps. Taking down an AWPer is big because an AWP is so expensive. If you kill an AWPer or you pick up an AWP on the ground um, for your AWPer or give it to someone else on your team, there is a big bonus of money for your team and a big big uh, detriment to their team. When you kill an AWPer, boom, jackpot. Now let's look at a common scenario. One team is winning over and over again and the other team is losing over and over again. This is where the blue shell effect comes in. If that losing team just keeps losing, they're rarely going to have the chance to come back. So, the game compensates. Losing over and over again gives you an extra 500 per round. Remember our diagram? So losing five times in a row gives you 3,400, 
more than if you won. So why do I call this the blue shell effect? That's a weird name. Well, I'll tell ya. I used to play a game called Mario Kart 64 in my youth. It was a go-kart racing game starring the cast of the, um, the Mario series. In the game, there were items that you could use to mess up the other drivers or give yourself a boost. One of these items was the dreaded spiked shell. It was a blue shell, blue Koopa shell, that had special properties. It was given to the player who was in last place, and it homed onto the player who was in first place, sought him out, and took him down. If you were in first place and doing well, the game gave advantages to the players who were behind you. The blue shell was also the most devastating item in the game. It took you out for longer than any other item. In my opinion, this is a terrible game mechanic. It rewards folks who aren't doing as well, and punishes folks who are doing well. What incentive do folks have to do well in the game? Why are you even trying to win if you're just going to get punished for it? Why play the game at all if you're not trying to win? You get the picture. Mario Kart 64 is fundamentally broken. So I use the blue shell effect to refer to this concept in Counter-Strike, where players get money for losing over and over. Sometimes in a game, you'll notice a team win over and over again five or six times in a row, and then lose one or two rounds, and they'll have to save, um, while the opposing team has tons of money. That's the blue shell effect. It, pre it prevents the idea of economic momentum from affecting the game. A team can't get too far ahead that they will win no matter what. But that is really the brilliance of Counter-Strike. No matter what is going on, no matter how low you've fallen, you can always win the game. You can always pull off some thrilling heroics and come out with a victory. One man can take down five, if they're good enough. Love this game. So that's pretty much how the whole mid-game works. You try to win every point, but at the same time try to figure out when the other team is going to be able to buy or not buy, and then you get that free round or that advantage. In CSGO, the cheap weapons are not very good against full buying players, so eco rounds are not easy. And there's just, you know, there's one weapon, though, that is cheap, powerful, and can turn the tide of battle. The D... No, just kidding. It's the P250. It's only 300, and it's good enough. It can do two-shot headshots just like the M4. The reason save rounds are so difficult to pull off is the absence of armor. When you get hit and you don't have armor, your screen shakes all over the place, making it impossible to do anything. All the other player has to do is get the first shot on your body somewhere, and it's nearly impossible you, for you to get a shot. And you're trying to do this with the P250, which doesn't have a, re a reliable spray pattern, and uh, you have to get two headshots with it. So I want to talk to you folks about one strategy that folks tend to use at the professional level. They will sort of half buy. It's what I call a pseudo buy. That's right. If they don't really have money to buy fully for all their players, sometimes only two or three of their players will buy or use the weapons that they saved from the last round. This is very common for some Eastern European teams, and it can provide some upsets. The concept is to use the money some of their players have to buy, and they'll still be able to full buy on another round. Also, the other team is expecting them to save, so there is a surprise factor. Also consider this. If a player dies, they drop their weapon. So if a player behind them um, picks it up when they die, they got a weapon. Good as new, don't have to worry about that guy with the pistol. Now the negative to this is they use their cash reserves. So if they take the economic momentum, which means they win a round and they get that money for winning, and uh, they have to win over and over again, um, they won't have the extra money to do so, so they may at some point be forced into another save round. One concept that does not exist in CSGO, but existed in previous CS games, was the DECO. You've probably heard this term before. The Desert Eagle Economy Round. The concept is, the Deagle is good enough. It's a one-hit headshot, and uh, you can go up against the best with it. So, you buy armor and a Deagle, and go for them frags. It's a cheap way to do an eco round. You can win a round doing it. You always could in, in Source and uh, 1.6, but in CSGO, this does not exist. Because Deagle's so bad. Alright, thanks for watching this tutorial series. I hope you learned something. This was sort of an overview of the entirety of the economy game. There are other strategies, other exceptions and concepts that I did not cover, but if I was going to cover everything first, I'd have to learn everything myself, and then I'd probably have to do a 15-part video to talk about it. So this is good for now. I hope you folks um, learned something from this. It's a good intro to the economy. I'm the War Owl, and I still...
have no closer.